Hi everyone, Dr. Rachel here, and today I'm going to talk to you about some cannabis myths and why they're myths. So my sister, Dr. Jessica, and I compiled a list of myths about cannabis, and I'm going to share them with you today with a little, a few other tidbits as well. But when we're talking about cannabis and medicine or recreational cannabis and legalization, a lot of these arguments, which we call myths, are brought up um, to, to support the prohibitionist theory and agenda. And we gotta get smart. And a, a lot of getting smart is getting educated and um, knowing how to rebut a lot of those arguments. So let's just kick in to gear. So myth number one, cannabis smoke causes lung cancer. Have they done studies? To prove or disprove that, yes, they have. They have. So Donald, Dr. Donald Tashkin at UCLA actually did conduct a study um, to see if, if if cannabis contributed to to lung cancer. And what they actually found is that smoking cannabis, yes, smoking cannabis, seemed to be protective against lung cancer in um, in in people who smoke tobacco, right? Um, how? Why? Well, it's probably because of the chemo profile, all those phytocannabinoids that are protecting against cancer in those patients. Now, smoking cannabis comes with its risks as well. Um, there are carcinogens in smoking or, or, or rolling a joint or smoking out of a pipe as compared to vaporizing, um, which is another inhalation method. But I think we can be encouraged that studies have been done to, to tease apart how carcinogens is cannabis and smoking cannabis um, in particular. Um, myth number two, that cannabis is addictive. I'm sure you guys have all heard um, the argument that cannabis is just another illicit drug, highly addictive. Uh, it remaining as a schedule one drug right now um, shows you that our government believes that it's still a very addictive substance. Well, very informed people have concluded that Cannabis may be about 9%, um, carry a 9% risk of addiction, but we have to note that some of that number might actually be inflated. A lot of people who have gone into rehab for cannabis use have done so to reduce sentencing, stiff penalties that they would have otherwise gotten for possession or quote unquote intent to sell, things like that. Those people are actually lumped into that 9% figure. Um, so we do have to second guess um, that addictive potential of the cannabis, at least to that degree, right? Well, I can also tell you that 9% addiction is less than caffeine. It's less than shopping. Um, it's certainly less than tobacco and alcohol. And those are two things that are free for our consumption, right? Anybody over the age of 18 or 21 can go and purchase um, cigarettes and, and alcohol, and we know how deadly those things are. Um, and they pose a much, much higher risk of addiction, uh, yet we have no problem with that. Um, the other thing I do need to note that, yeah, for adolescents, we do um, quote a much higher risk, about 17%. And, and that is really talking about, sorry, um, my phone might die on us, guys, but I'll try to keep this going. Um, for heavy users, kids that start smoking in their adolescence and are heavy users, we do quote about a 17% risk of addiction um, with cannabis. All right, number three, myth number three, cannabis kills brain cells. Um, doctors like quoting this, parents like quoting this, the government likes quoting this myth. Um, and it's just not true. Science has shown us that cannabinoids are neuroprotective and neuroregenerative. What does that mean? That means that um, when the brain gets trauma, it is inflicted with trauma, it can cause some swelling. And cannabinoids, the ones our body produces, as well as phytocannabinoids, those that are found in cannabis and other botanicals, actually serve to decrease swelling, to decrease that, that um, the, the inflammatory reaction around those areas in the brain. Um, you know, we, obviously we need more scientific study, more research surrounding that, but with that knowledge, 
we should be encouraged that the science of cannabis should evolve to show us that cannabis just might be an effective therapy for concussion or post-concussive syndrome or uh, acute stroke, for example. Um, do we have those clinical trials and the data to support that right now? No, um, but I'm personally very excited to see um, where those leads take us. All right. Um, oh, something else to note though, um, minors, right? Minors, a lot of people get concerned about cannabis use in adolescence, even for medicinal purposes, right? A lot of kids um, depend on cannabis to treat seizures or, or ADHD um, or symptoms of a lot of other gnarly conditions um, that, that we do sympathize with them for and know that cannabis can help. Well, that endocannabinoid system is actually very finely tuned in the adolescent brain. Um, you know, kids are generally healthier than adults, right? Um, so in including their brain, everything's a lot more finely tuned. And, and when we add cannabinoids, could it disrupt some, some signaling, some regulation? We don't know just yet, um, but we highly recommend for kids who have serious conditions for which we want to use cannabis as therapy to do so under the oversight of a medical uh, professional. Right, especially one that's knowledgeable in cannabis and hopefully pediatrics um, who can give some meaningful oversight and care and attention. And also somebody who can, um, who can um, interpret a lot of the data that's out there. Um, you know, I feel as, as a physician myself, my job is to read the literature, follow the science, and then um, in layman's terms, uh, explain how that can be beneficial in the clinical setting um, to a patient. And it's no different with the science of cannabis. It's not. There's tons of articles out there that are very confusing to read. Um, but that's what I was taught to do and, and, and doctors like me were taught to do is interpret that data, that data um, for the benefit of our patients. Okay, so three myths down, three more to go. All right, myth number four, cannabis causes schizophrenia. <laughs> um, that's a big one, and that's one a lot of people use, especially uh, scientists and even legislators um, use uh, to support their prohibitionist um, desires and agenda. And um, one thing we all have to understand, guys, is that association or a link or a correlation, you know, just to throw out some of the terms that we often read in this literature, is not the same thing as causation. Do we know that cannabis causes schizophrenia? No, we do not. Um, what do we see? We see a lot of people who become diagnosed with schizophrenia or start to manifest the symptoms of schizophrenia um, do so after the cessation of their cannabis use. Um, so, you know, since prohibition and even now, and you know, all the time in between, patients have been self-medicating. Um, people with schizophrenia, people with bipolar, anxiety, depression, Right? Cannabis is actually a tool that all four of those conditions and the people who are suffering from them um, have used to feel better. Um, so yeah, are there a certain uh, a population out there who's at increased risk of getting uh, schizophrenia or becoming suicidal secondary to the depression? Yes, sure. Um, but can we say that cannabis increases that risk? I'm not sure that we can make that conclusion. Um, there may be an association. And, and by that, let me describe that a little bit. If I'm a person who is at increased risk of depression or increased risk of schizophrenia or have severe bipolar or severe anxiety or severe depression to the point where I might feel suicidal, I might use cannabis to feel better. Um, and unfortunately, the, the data has been sort of misconstrued to suggest that people with severe uh, um, bipolar, people with severe depression, uh, with suicidal ideation, actually have those severe conditions because of the cannabis use. I'm gonna read something to you guys. Let me pull it up here on my computer um, to sort of illustrate this. So recently, the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine came out with a really rather comprehensive study of the recent research surrounding recreational and medicinal use of cannabis. Um, they, they just pooled all the literature, read through it, and then came to some conclusions that they summarized and wanted to share with the public. So let me move this so I can get to it to read it to you. Um, so this is what they say. 
The evidence reviewed by the committee suggests that cannabis use is likely to increase the risk of developing schizophrenia, other psychoses, and social anxiety disorders, and to a lesser extent, depression. Alternatively, in individuals with schizophrenia and other psychoses, a history of cannabis use may be linked to better performance on learning and memory tasks. Now that's, that's interesting, right? Something positive. Um, heavy cannabis users are more likely to report thoughts of suicide than non-users, and in individuals with bipolar disorder, near daily cannabis users show increased symptoms of the disorder than non-users. That doesn't tell me that the people with severe bipolar and, and depression to the degree that they might be suicidal are that way because of the cannabis use. Um, that's the distinction that I think needs to be made um, before you know making that conclusion or allowing this sort of data to be misconstrued um, by people who are making big decisions on behalf of, of the constituents in their states and obviously in this country at large. Okay, all right. Um, one thing to note, you know, I, I will, I, I do not believe that cannabis causes schizophrenia. Um, you would have to prove that to me with some quality um, study and, and research. But um, the side effects of THC can cause some psychoses in some patients. So particularly in patients who are prone to anxiety, we are recommending to use low THC strains because THC can rev up that angst, okay? High THC can cause increased anxiety, it can cause panic, it can cause a racing heartbeat, profuse sweatiness, it can cause paranoia, right? And, and, and those are symptoms that can be misdiagnosed as schizophrenia or schizophrenic or schizoid, right? Um, so we have to be very uh, careful not to misdiagnose or misrepresent what these symptoms uh, may be showing. It, you just might need to come off of a high, all right? Um, which <laughs> leads me to one aside, right? Yes, ER visits are on the rise in states where uh, cannabis is medicinally legal. More people are getting cannabis into their hands, but guess what? That means more people um, uh, are using cannabis that are uneducated about the side effects of cannabis, right? Um, so I, I, I truly believe that legalization, especially at the recreational level, right, opening up cannabis use to everybody over the age of 18, needs to come with some really comprehensive education. Um, I cannot stress that more, all right? Um, the side effects of THC can actually be treated through natural remedy. Um, I think it would behoove ER professionals to know what those are so that when patients do come to the ER with a suspe suspected overdose of, of cannabis and THC, that they are able to tend to them um, you know, efficiently and, and adequately to bring them off of that high, right? To reduce those symptoms that, that are, yeah, they're alarming um, and, and, and can cause some worry especially um, with respect to our, our younger populations. Okay, guys, ready to move on? Myth number five, cannabis is a gateway drug. I love this one. <laughs> um, it couldn't be any more wrong, but I also want you to read what um, the study suggested about that, that myth, okay? So cannabis use and the abuse of other substances. The committee found limited evidence that cannabis use increases the rate of initiating other drug use, right? So limited evidence that cannabis increases the rate of initiating other drug use, primarily the use of tobacco. However, the committee found moderate evidence to suggest, right? Let's be very, let's be very intentional about the words that we use, to suggest that there is a link, a link, a correlation, an association, not causation, between cannabis use and the development of substance dependence and or a substance abuse disorder for substances including alcohol, tobacco, and other illicit drugs. As a cannabis medicine doctor, I actually know that patients addicted to opiates, patients addicted to heroin and cocaine get off of those drugs using cannabis, right? And we have moderate evidence to suggest a link between cannabis use and illicit drug use and dependency, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. What, what I can tell you is that over, over the decades, right, especially in the prohibition era, 
cannabis was sold by the same people pushing heroin, the same people pushing cocaine. And where you have an opportunity to try different or harder drugs, people do, okay? So again, there's that association again. Um, where there is cannabis and cocaine available, a person can choose to partake in either. Um, most people who use cannabis stop at cannabis. All right, because most people are using cannabis for a therapeutic purpose. I don't care if you're getting home from work and just want to relax at home, right, and enjoy a television show, or if you have a debilitating pain condition for which you use cannabis. It's, those are both therapeutic uses, right? And again, most people stop at cannabis. All right. Myth number six. Medical cannabis is a joke. I still hear this one, people. Do you hear this? I still hear this argument that medical cannabis is not real. It's just an excuse uh, people give to, to get high, and it's not. And quite frankly, making that argument dismisses uh, all of those patients and clinicians who, who, who made it their business to understand um, how to use cannabis well to treat their conditions. Right? We know patients have gotten off countless medications using cannabis. I just mentioned those narcotics, those pesky narcotics that have been getting a lot of media attention that we know cause overdoses, um, that we know kill people if they go through withdrawal from those medications, right? It's a big deal and cannabis helps people get off of that, right? And people have the nerve to say medical cannabis is a joke. Um, I, I do think with re-education, a lot of people are coming to understand that these um, arguments are in fact myths. Um, but a lot of our heavy hitters, a lot of our heavy game players, our, our legislators um, aren't quite there yet. Um, I think in states where we're seeing legalization you know, ramp up um, and roll out, we, we do have responsible decision makers and, and policy makers um, who, who are interested in learning more. None of us know enough about cannabis. Even our leading scientists don't know enough, which is why we need to push for more funding to have meaningful um, research and, and clinical study. You know, um, in our clinics, we, we believe that we're collect collecting clinical data and hopefully we'll get enough to one day write our own reports. Um, but we have to have these conversations, right? So for both sides of the fence, you, you have to be well, um, well read in, in cannabis medicine. Um, you, you need to be well read in some of the myths that we're gonna be forced to debunk so that we can stand up um, and, and go to you know, community events and, and legislative days and represent cannabis medicine well. So we do need to know where the opposition is coming from and, and be able to debunk their myths on target, right? So um, I, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed debunking some myths with me. Um, if you have any questions, I'll go back through the Facebook page and, and answer as many questions as I can. Um, and maybe we'll have another myth busting session in the future and we'll cover some other common myths out there. These are really the top six um, that we encounter on a regular basis. Um, but hopefully I'll come back with some more because I want to feel you guys and get you ready to, to debunk some myths too, okay? Um, the only way we're going to make cannabis medicine mainstream is by talking about it and, and talking about it smartly, all right? Um, so let's use the standing literature to back us up. All right. Over and out, guys. Bye.